So when I was approaching, I always wanted that sure thing, but there's just no certainties with approaching. You know, as the saying goes, nothing is certain except death, taxes, and sucky Adam Sandler movies. Welcome to the Dating Transformation Podcast. Here's your host, dating coach, Connell Barrett. All right, welcome to the Dating Transformation Podcast. I am your host, dating coach, Connell Barrett. I'm here to help you gain confidence, learn to flirt, and attract an amazing girlfriend. And do this all with authenticity as your real best self. Not a bunch of sketchy pickup artist nonsense. Uh, so welcome to the next episode. This is launch week. Um, by, the t- by the time you're done listening to this episode, you're going to get some really awesome game-changing tips about what women want. About what women want. I've got an amazing guest. She's going to give us game-changing tips for, actually, she's got about 10 game-changing tips for how to talk to women, how to text them on the apps, how to approach them, how not to approach them. So stick around for the whole episode because my guest, Lindsay Metzelar, is going to give us some great tips and advice, and I'm going to jump in and join her. Um, Okay, so today I want to first, I want to tell you a story. I want to share with you something that uh, (laughs) really bothered me because if you're anything like me, and I think you probably are, you want to approach women out in the world right? You might see a woman at a bar or that really cute stunner in the yoga outfit who smiles at you sometimes at the gym. Or maybe you, oh, this was a big one for me. Maybe you're at a coffee shop, you're at a Starbucks, a park on a Saturday afternoon, and then you just see a woman sitting on a bench or she's waiting for her coffee at Starbucks and she's just like, three feet away from you and you would love to break the ice with her, approach her, try to make some conversation happen and potentially get mutual attraction, get a date, but something holds you back, right? You get in your head. You think, oh, I don't know what to say. Or if I approach her, it's going to be weird and creepy. Or if if I get shot down, these people are going to see it and... It's going to feel awkward and weird. And so very likely you rarely or never approach women you find attractive, especially not in the daytime. Maybe you do it at night with a little bit of liquid courage. Uh, Dr. Jack Daniels can perform some short-term miracles, but long-term alcohol is not the way to approach women. So, And I totally get how this feels. When I first was working on my dating life, I was basically exactly where you are. I did not approach. I doubted myself. I was afraid. I thought it was weird and creepy to approach women or it might be seen that way. And here was the moment that really was the turning point for me where I decided, okay, I need to, I'm going to get some help. I'm going to get some coaching. I'm going to try. I'm going to fix this somehow. I was at a Starbucks on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, in 2008 and I saw this really cute brunette sitting by herself on her phone drinking her chai latte she's wearing a a denim mini skirt really cute my crush at the time was Katie Holmes the actress Katie Holmes she looked a lot like Katie Holmes and I said okay Connell you're finally gonna do it you're gonna walk over there and approach this girl here you go and um, I walked over to her table and there was even a seat next to her it was almost like an invitation to sit down and i walked over and i made a beeline for her and at the last minute i took a detour and basically went to the men's room (laughs) and i thought okay i was getting myself psyched up get psyched up go over to her get out of the men's room go back over to her i walked to her table again and then i circled it once maybe twice and I wanted so badly to approach her but it was like there was an invisible barrier it was just it was almost like there was a force field around her I couldn't do it the thoughts that held me back were oh man these people are gonna see me approach a girl if she shoots me down I'm gonna feel so fucking uh creepy 
I don't want to be a creep. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice boy from Ohio. I, I don't want to creep out a girl. I don't want to get shot down. And basically, I circled her, <laughs> I circled her chair for about, I don't know, off and on for about two or three minutes. And I was kind of like a frightened shark, circling but too afraid to, <laughs> to bite, quote unquote. Anyway, um, I couldn't get the courage up. And finally, after a few minutes, I go back to my seat and I see her walk up and she just walks out. And I watch her walk away on Park Avenue and 29th Street in Manhattan. And I remember thinking, damn it, what's wrong with you? Why can't you approach a girl? And I remember also thinking, there goes another really cool, potentially awesome, intelligent, fun, definitely beautiful woman who could have been in my life. I could have had a date with her, maybe. I, who knows? Maybe we, she would have become my girlfriend. If nothing else, I could have just stepped up and taken an action. But I didn't do it. And I felt like I couldn't do it. And I sat down and I grabbed a pen. I had a pen with me and I, I started writing on a Starbucks napkin, you suck, you suck, you suck. <laughs> and that was when I was really upset at myself. And that's when I went online and, and found uh, the guy who became my first coach. Anyway, the lesson here or the kind of the takeaway I want to share with you is um, if you are, first of all, just know that you don't suck. I wrote a book called Dating Sucks, But You Don't. And the message here of this book, among the messages, is, hey, man, if you can't approach women, it's not that you suck. It's that dating is hard. It's that approaching can feel very challenging and very scary, but you don't suck. Dating can definitely suck, but you don't. You're awesome. And I, I had lost a sense of my awesomeness at that time, and I just could not approach women. So... Um, I needed help from a coach. You may not need a coach. I want to give you a tip right now that you can take out into the world and use it today. That'll make it so much easier to step up to break the ice with that attractive women who you see at a bar, at the gym, at Starbucks, wherever you might be. Here's what I wish I had known back in 2008. Um, Basically, it's a, it's a mindset fix and it's a, it's a practical tip. I could not approach that woman because I thought, number one, it's creepy and weird to, to hit on girls. And also, I, didn't, I literally didn't know what to say. I literally had no idea what the right thing to say was. So here's a two-part tip. Tip number one is I want you to give yourself permission and remind yourself that it's true. Women don't want every man approaching them, but they definitely want a high value, awesome man with a lot to offer to chat with them. And you have to get in touch with what you offer. You have to get a sense of, hey, I have some really great things about myself, whatever they may be, right? I'm, I have this hobby, I have a full-time job, I'm a good cook, I love to travel, I'm fit, I'm at the gym all the time. You gotta remind yourself that women do want men of value to break the ice with them in a charming way. So they don't wanna get hit on, per se, but they do want a high-value man like you to break the ice and make her smile. So I was so worried that day about being creepy, hitting on her, getting blown out. It was a mindset issue. Remind yourself, it's okay to approach. You're not hitting on her. You're breaking the ice. You're giving her a small gift. The gift of a short, authentic, brief, positive interaction. And women love that. Women love that. So tip number one is just give yourself permission. It's, I'm not hitting on the girl. I'm giving her something of value. A moment with me. And the second tip is what to say, right? You might not know what to say. Here's the great way to always know what to say. Look at the woman you want to chat with and notice something about her that's not looks related that you like and appreciate. So don't make it about, or at least don't make it, don't make it about her physical features, okay? It can be a compliment on her look, her style, but don't make it about her lips, her body, her 
T and A, obviously. Um, here's a great way to approach. Compliment something that you appreciate. For example, if I could go back in time to that girl in the Starbucks, I would say, hey, excuse me, miss. I just want to say that you have great style. You're really put together and you have awesome style. That's not hitting on a girl. That's just giving a genuine compliment about her cool denim skirt and her, maybe she, I forget it's been so long, but let's say she was wearing cool pink Chuck Taylor sneakers. Excuse me, miss, I love your style. Great sneakers, awesome denim mini skirt. You got it going on. And let her respond to that. There's something about an authentic, specific, well-intentioned compliment that nine out of 10 women will take very well. They'll appreciate it. Uh, and then you've broken the ice. You've done the hardest thing. You've said something to a woman with good intentions, and then she'll take it in. And then in terms of what to say next, we'll go into that on a different podcast. But think of it as, think of it as a compliment. Think of a compliment as a small gift. You're not out in the world trying to take from women. You're not trying to get phone numbers. You're not trying to get attraction. You're not trying to get sex. I mean, not at first. <laughs> Eventually, we, we want those things in a win-win way. But if you want to get rid of approach anxiety today, make it about, I'm going to give genuine, sincere, real compliments to women without agenda, and then let those compliments land and see how she responds. If she smiles and says, oh my God, thank you so much. You noticed my awesome leather jacket. I appreciate that. Who knows? You might, you, she might ask you a question or compliment you back. And now you're talking to a really pretty girl who you just approached and that's when good things can happen. But even if she, even if it doesn't go further than the compliment and she accepts the compliment, I promise you, you feel so much better by taking that action. You feel amazing about yourself as a man by being on that true authentic path and approaching women from a place of good, courageous, authentic intention. I hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, don't do what I do. did. Don't circle her chair for five minutes like a creepy little scared shark. <laughs> and don't write, you suck on a napkin. Life's too short to feel that way about yourself. Okay, that was uh, my little opening gambit for you here today. Um, stick around. We're going to talk to Lindsay Metzelar. Lindsay, you're going to love Lindsay. Lind Lindsay is a dating expert and an influencer. She's also a very experienced dater. She's married now. She's going to give you the view from the inside. What do women want? How do we text them? How do you? How do we approach them from her point of view? Um, you're going to get so many great tips from Lindsay. You're going to love this conversation. Stick around. I'll be right back with Lindsay Metzelar. I'm going to read your mind. Ready? I'll bet that you would love to confidently approach women, get great matches on the dating apps, flirt with charm, and attract your dream girlfriend. Right? But fear keeps you from approaching. You're not sure how to flirt. You struggle on the apps. And desirable women just don't seem into you. Well, I have great news. Dating coach Connell Barrett can help. He's guided thousands of men like you to more confidence and helped them attract their dream girlfriends. So book a free strategy call today to see if Connell's coaching is right for you. On your call, Connell or a team member will give you personalized advice to help you have more confidence, more dates, and more fun. Oh, and you'll be dating women as your best self, a charming gentleman. That's because Connell does not teach creepy pickup artist tricks. He unlocks your most confident self, so you can make authentic, romantic connections. Your next steps? Book your free call today at datingtransformation.com forward slash contact and grab a time that works for you. Then you'll be on your way to more confidence, better results, and attracting bright, beautiful women. Oh, so you know? Soon Connell will stop taking on new clients, so book a call today while you still can. Go to datingtransformation.com forward slash contact and transform your love life. Bye. And we're back with Lindsay Metzelar. Uh, I'm super psyched to have Lindsay here. Uh, Lindsay is a native New Yorker, and she hosts a podcast called We Met at Acme, which is a popular, and I can verify, an awesome millennial dating podcast. I know because I was on it. 
even though I'm way too old to be even close to a millennial. Uh, we Met at Acme is also a brand about all things dating from live events, mixers, retreats, and more stuff that I'm sure we're going to get into. And plus, I'm just a huge fan of Lindsay's Instagram, where you can get a lot of really great practical, quick dating tips. She does this really cool thing where she gives tips in fours, which I love, like four mistakes not to make on first dates and the like. And her Instagram is at We Met at Acme. Uh, get ready because Lindsay's a dating advice machine, and I'm super stoked to have her here today. Lindsay, welcome to Launch Week here at Dating Transformation Podcast. I am honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Your resume is so long, we have no more time for questions. But, um, <laughs> let's pack but it thanks, up then. But thanks for stopping by. Uh, cool. Well, let's start. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about We Met at Acme. Uh, I'm sure you get this a lot, so pardon the cliched question, but what does the name mean? Where did it come from? And of course, what is the, what's the core mission? What's the core message of We Met at Acme? The name came because I was very single at the time of starting my podcast, and I was frequenting Acme, which is a club in the city. And I had met some people there, and I knew some people that met there, and it just kind of rolled off the tongue and sounded really really nice. Um, and the second part of the question was, remind me again. Well, the, your, your, your main mission my, my here, my you, mission. you primarily, mm -hmm. you primarily talk to millennials as I understand it. Yeah. What's yes. the, what's the core mission? What's the core message? I do talk to millennials. Um, the core message is really, I'm trying to be like a big sister character to a lot of people in the dating world. Um, and, the message is is like you are amazing you you know know your self worth and date like you are the shit basically date like it's about you choosing them not them choosing you and here are some ways to make dating not as stressful and that's when the rules come in all right i don't know if you ever want to write a book but that's a not a bad working title is date like you're the shit <laughs> um, instead of the the fuck trope, maybe you'll start the the shit. You are the shit trope. The shit trope. <laughs> the shit's coming back. Bring nice. back the shits. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your origin story. Whether it's meeting people at Acme or even before then, I'm fascinated by by how people go from doubtful, struggling, lack of confidence to finding the one. You're happily married. You've obviously done something very right. But can you talk a little bit about your origin story? Maybe when you weren't a dating expert or didn't have um, kind of a handle on how to do this in a, in a way that's really effective. Yeah. Well, what's funny is that I always thought that I was an expert, right? Like I was that overconfident dater from the beginning where I thought that I was doing everything right all the time until I was really badly dumped. And it was kind oh. of like a wake up call where I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm not doing the right things or I'm not as good as I think I am. And the reason I thought I was good was because I was always great at helping friends text and like the banter stuff. That was like something I was confident about that I knew what I was doing. But when it came to, and like I could get I could get people to date me, right? But then when it came to like long lasting relationships, it was a little bit harder. Um, and so I had a friend come over and we were just kind of talking about our dating life. And I was, this was like five years ago. And I was like, why don't we just record this conversation? There is no podcast out there that's about dating right now. It's like news and crime. And I feel like other people can relate to this chaos that is dating especially in new york city but as a millennial mm. and so we just recorded it and we released it um and the rest is history tell me a bit a bit more about what what it's like dating as a millennial now or then ba basically what do millennials have to take under consideration deal with endure versus other generations i'm gen x and there's people who are younger now than than millennials what is it about millennials that that makes them differentiate from others? Millennials have so many different mediums when it comes to dating. It is all of these different ways to communicate. 
So Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Venmo, like anything is a dating app to millennials. And so mm. it gets really complicated. Like we're overstimulated. Um, we, we just have too many different modes of communication that often we're not communicating at all as millennials. And with the dating apps, which everyone has, I guess every generation has, but we get really desensitized to just like swiping and swiping and swiping. And so I think it's just between communication struggles and having too many options as a millennial dater, it can be really hard to sift through the noise and actually stick with something. So when one of my male clients says, oh, Connell, I've got all these matches, but every time I ask a woman out, she finds a reason not to go. Or, or maybe she goes quiet. Even though things are going well, she goes quiet. Can that be because people have so many dating options today? That could be. It also could be because women are so complicated and so confusing. And I like will talk to women about their dating lives and they'll be like, I just don't understand. Like this person will talk to me forever and not ask me out. But then when somebody asks them out like right away, they're like, oh my God, he asked me out right away. And so I think it's just finding like a happy medium between the two. I'd imagine in that situation, the woman was just like, oh my God, it was like too much too soon, you know? Yeah. Okay. We're going to get back to texting for sure because my listener right now is, is he's literally sitting on the edge of his seat because you're a woman and you're an expert and you have been single and there's something about a woman giving men advice that means so much to them. I, I took my girlfriend out with me once doing infield coaching with my clients where we go out on the town for the weekend and their focus all shifted away from me and they were just like, and then what do I text next and what do women want? So you're like an MVP here. So Love we'll come it. back to the we'll come back to the texting help. Um, I, I just want to maybe share some fun stories about your dating past. Uh, one of my favorite tips for men is a fun question to ask early on a first date is asking a woman for any funny dating horror stories she has because it starts it starts things out in a fun, light place. And also it kind of makes him hopefully look cooler than whatever loser guy she's talking about. Um, so let me ask you, uh, do you have any fun, memorable first date horror stories that from back in the day, back you in your know, single days? You I never was that good at this answer because I got decently lucky. I mean, I had, I had one date that was just like really mean. Um, he mm. told me that I sounded like a farmer, which like, I guess he meant as an insult, like, <laughs> and I didn't really know how to respond to that. And that was just a weird experience. And then I had, um, so I had like the mean guys and then I've had the guys who are just like, it's pulling teeth to have a conversation with. Yeah. And it's so funny. It's always those guys that it's pulling teeth to have a conversation with that asks you on a second date and you're like, were we on the same date? Like, <laughs> were we? And I wonder, I bet you it's the same for reverse, meaning like if a guy feels like he's pulling teeth on a date, maybe the girl thinks that it went well. You know what I mean? Right. Interesting. I want, by the way, back to the farmer, the guy who called you a farmer. Do you think there might have been, he might have been doing a quote unquote neg where he's like tease it's the girl, possible. try to make her feel insecure? It's possible, but I don't think negging works in any... Negging came from a place of... I feel like it was created from a place of insecurity. Just like this person's right. doing so well. They think they're so cool. So let's like knock them down a peg and see if it works. Negging only worked once for me in college. But again, I was in college. So that's probably why. It worked on you or you did it? No, it worked on me. Someone did it to me. Do you remember what it was? What he they, said? A guy came up to me who I later ended up dating and he said, your legs are so hairy. <laughs> that's definitely and, and it that's was actually an neg. insult. That's not a neg at all. That's just an insult. And, and by the way, he had no idea if they were or not. He was just saying that. And Jesus. my legs were hairy. I don't really shave my legs, but I'm not like a hairy person. They just like, it's like peach fuzz. But I was like, what? Like, how do you know? You know? And, <laughs> but normally does not work. I hate it when guys steal my lines because I invented 
your legs are hairy. That's <laughs> really annoying. I get no credit for that. I got to start copywriting my best. No, I never. I, I don't like negs. Uh, you, you totally nailed it. Negs come from this place of, uh, well, she must me, be above me, so I got to find a way to bring her down to my level. Totally. Which, even if it worked, it's like gross, but it's coming from such a bad place of, hey, why don't you just lift yourself up and make your yourself as most authentically, vulnerably awesome as you can be and see if you guys genuinely connect. That's way more effective. Totally. Way more. Uh, okay. A couple more dating questions for you. Uh, I actually, I went to your website the other day and I saw one tip like on the homepage. So it must be an important tip. A little piece of wisdom that read, if you're confused, they're not interested. Yep. Uh, can you elaborate on what that means? So what that means is that if, and this is more um, like towards women dating men, it's like if you're, but still for men too, if you're confused about how they feel about you, like they're hot and cold, or you're still trying to figure out, screenshot the conversation, send it to friends, do you think they like me? You know, like waiting on their every last word to try yeah. to figure out. Like it's, like, it's like that meme with like the math problem on the board. Like, do they like me? Yeah. Um, right. They don't because you wouldn't be confused if somebody did like you. If somebody, if somebody showed up consistently, made plans with you, messaged you, you know, every day when you're dating and, and whatnot. That's what that really means. And that like would have saved me so much time when dating in my 20s if I knew that. Okay. All right, so there's a little bit of uh, tough love there. It's like, hey, if you're confused, the truth is they're not interested, they're not that into you. Right, like if you're asking a friend, if you're like, oh, maybe he, you know, maybe he turned his phone off for the weekend, no. Yeah, okay. Well, again, as a formerly single eligible woman, what are some signs that a woman either is or isn't interested in a guy so he can get clarity on whether she's probably into it or probably not? Yeah. I think I will say that it's harder, um, especially if it's a woman who follows We Met at Acme's dating rules, because we don't necessarily put all of our cards on the table right away. Okay. But if a woman answers your text in like a timely manner, if she's continuing to get excited when you suggest going out on dates and she kisses you and, you know, smiles and laughs at your jokes and likes to banter with you and enjoys like talking every day and you have like kind of these inside jokes like those are all signs that a woman is interested in you um i think that with women we are more clear when we're not interested than men um mm. we will usually send like a what i call like an anti-ghost text which is like you know, it's been great getting to know you. Uh, I didn't feel a connection, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, I feel, and I could be wrong, but most of the women that I know do, aren't big on like the leading guys on for no reason type of thing. Um, and like we're human, just like we would feel bad if we were taken on multiple nice dinner dates and still weren't interested. We'd probably cut it off after a while. So I think that if a woman's interested, she's continuing to go out with you, there's kissing, maybe a little bit more as you get to know each other, um, texting, and if a woman's not interested in you, then she's not responding to your messages, right. she's you know, continuing to reschedule, prioritize other things, but what can be complicated from a man's perspective is like if you are the kind of guy who's not planning these dates ahead who's sending that like last minute text that's like oh like some like are you free now like, and then you're like but she's not going out with me then that's on you then she would be interested in you if you like got your shit together yeah for me and tell me if you yeah. agree or not i tell my clients is she talking to you is she responsive is there some good energy or there's, there's some emojis going both ways and maybe she can't meet up with you right away, but if she's still responsive and there's a good vibe, she might just be a really popular, busy person who is open to yeah. it. So I say, don't give up, 
be persistent, but, but empathetic and mm -hmm. stay charming, as charming as you can. I dated a, a woman a couple years ago and I even send this text exchange to my clients. It's about six weeks of texting from she and, she and myself matching to our first date. I must have asked her four or five times, asked her out, and every time she couldn't go, but she had a good reason, and she was still responsive, and she was, it was, it was the, the tennis ball was going back and forth, so I stayed persistent, and we did end up meeting up and going out, but if she had just gone totally quiet, then I would have just been a creepy stalker if I'd have, if I'd have kept asking her out, right? Totally, and I love that you did that and that you stayed with it, and I think that's the one double standard that that's one of the double standards that men can get away with is that persistency. And like, mm. if, if I were coaching women, I would be like, you know, if he's interested, he's gonna want to go out with you. But for women, I think a lot of the time we hear these stories of like, Oh, I wasn't like, Oh, I was like, you know, still had feelings for my ex or I was doing, dealing with this, but like he kept texting me and like showing that he was interested in me. And then like it aligned and worked out. You don't often hear that the other way around. Right. Okay. So let's switch to the topic of vulnerability and dating. I feel one of the things I really like about your podcast is how real and vulnerable you and your guests are. Uh, you have an episode. I know that was it was a tongue-in-cheek title, but you had an episode that really caught my eye that read, it's titled, So I Almost Got Divorced Two Weeks Ago. And you didn't really get divorced, but... It was still a, a real vulnerable thing to write and to talk about on your podcast, this fight mm -hmm. you had with your, your husband. And I thought, what, what it, what's your view on how vulnerable and real to be on dates, those first few dates, those first few weeks of texting and getting to know somebody? Can you be too vulnerable and can you be too walled off and not vulnerable enough? What are your thoughts on the, just the topic of vulnerability in dating? Vulnerability is crucial when dating. I think that it's definitely a dance in terms of like when you start to be vulnerable. I would say like dates one to three, you like do like a tiny dive into vulnerability. And then after the third date is when you get a little bit deeper. And but you could sprinkle it in here and that here and there. Like, for example, I think that it's really great to talk about your past relationships on the first few dates, okay. not, not like extensively, but more so just like, why did, what, like, how come your last relationship ended? What did you like take away from it? What's your blind spot when it comes to dating that like you're trying to be better at in, in relationships? I think that just that curiosity is crucial and that curiosity creates vulnerability um so mm. that kind of vulnerability is good i think if you have like a family trauma i which we all do i would sure. probably save that for like date four or or after right. um but again like going back to the sprinkling like if you're in therapy and you think that that's a big part of your life and has shaped you then talk about that in dates one two three i think that that's like that shows like the power in vulnerability if you're able to, you know, talk about that stuff in a positive way. But just don't bring the energy down with your vulnerability, right. if that makes sense. Yes. Because a woman might view that well, if a man was if a man was opened up about something vulnerable, but the energy diminished, mm -hmm. how how might a woman take that or how might that hurt the date? I think that everybody when they're dating is looking for somebody to bring lightness and mm. like good energy into their lives and levity. And when we kind of dump our shit onto the date, it's can be indicative of like how that relationship is going to go. Like, Oh, this person's going to be complaining or this person's going to bring me down. And so it's not like, don't be yourself. If you have that, part of you that's that's okay but it's more like lead with your good foot foot or the best foot forward and so like for example with the therapy um thing like i might bring it up to say or like if i were a guy I'd bring it up to say like therapy has been so amazing for me made me realize like that my career wasn't the best for me now i'm in this great career as opposed yeah. to being like therapy made me realize that like 
I really struggled as a kid and like I'm and like dating has been really hard for me. Like it's just it's like you want to just bring that positivity into the date because people are expecting to leave in a good mood from a date, not like being brought down. Right. And my dog died last week and my boss was mean to me and Mm -hmm. I'm behind on my rent. So can I see you again next week? Exactly. Uh, It's it's not going to happen. Rejection, ghosting, loneliness, lack of dates and lack of confidence. For many men, dating just sucks, but it doesn't have to. There's a simple yet powerful way to gain instant confidence and attract a great girlfriend. Be radically authentic. It's all laid out in the number one Amazon best-selling book, Dating Sucks But You Don't. Your step-by-step guide to attracting wonderful women and doing it with total authenticity. Author and dating coach Connell Barrett has had and fixed all the dating problems that you struggle with. He's also helped thousands of men gain confidence and find love. He's put his best tips and strategies into Dating Sucks But You Don't so that you can confidently approach women and get dates. Become magnetic and attractive, even if you're not tall or great looking. Always know what to say to make sparks fly. Get lots of great matches and dates on the dating apps and attract your dream woman. You can find Dating Sucks But You Don't on Amazon or wherever books are sold, in paperback, Kindle and audiobook. Get Dating Sucks But You Don't today to transform your confidence and find your dream girl. Yeah, one of the quotes from my book that I've dropped every now and then is, on a date, be an open book, not an open wound. Mm, Vulnerable, authentic, which is my whole thing. You can be anything, anything can be too much of that thing. Yeah. or, Or delivered with the wrong energy. I remember on my first date with my now girlfriend, Jess, I remember it, it somehow the topic of past relationship relationships came up and I talked about I told a story two or three minute story about my nine week marriage yeah and how I felt rejected by all women and it set me off on this path and it sounds the topic might not sound like that textbook dating topic but it was really through the lens of look how I learned so much from it I've grown my ex and I are fine and it's not going to bring the date down as, as long as to your point you're not the energy doesn't it's not about negativity it's about oh hey this was tough for me but man i'm glad i went through it because now i'm a better person like that's exactly. a good frame exactly yeah focusing on the lesson focusing on the takeaway is amazing and then what i think is cool about that not in a manipulative way but just in a way of human connection is is just kind of letting this person, showing, not telling this person, but showing this person that, hey, that's who I was then, and look at this awesome guy you see before you now. Not me, Connell, I mean, <laughs> whoever's listening to this. Uh, yeah, I made mistakes, I'm human, I'm flawed, but I've learned yeah. from them, and here I am, we're all just trying to do our best. And I think that kind of vulnerability can be very attractive. Compared to the guy who's like trying to use cool lines, and nagging, and acting all cool and bored, and I, that just never worked for me. Plus, it just felt gross. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I think that's great. And like vulnerability shows maturity and shows that like you are ready mm. to find that connection. You had a great conversation with Jordana Abraham about vulnerability on your podcast a while back. Uh, and she said something. She had this great quote that I wanted to ask you about. She said, she was talking about, you were talking about flirting or or just about romantic connection versus not versus disconnecting and she said i'm paraphrasing now i think she said logic is the opposite of romance and i believe you were talking about relationships but Mm -hmm. when she said that i thought oh my gosh so many men go out on first dates and they speak very logically about facts figures this is my it job these here are some dates and information And the conversation might flow, quote unquote, but there's not like the the romance, the fun, the emotion tied to it. If, again, as a formerly single woman, uh, what's your take on the idea of being too logical and informational versus more romantic, more you know, emotionally connected in the way you communicate on a date? I think most men lean towards too logical. And yeah. I forgot where I was when I learned this, but 
Oh yeah, I remember. I was in um, some sort of like WeWork seminar a long time ago, and we were being taught about listening and how men listen and how women listen. And it was like men usually listen to fix the problem, whereas men, sorry, whereas women listen to like be empathetic towards the problem and like hear you and, right. you know, commiserate or whatnot. And that kind of relates to dating. It's like men lean towards like what makes sense of this. And women tend to lean towards like, what am I feeling about this? And I think that both men and women need to take a page from the other person's book. And so men, I think, need to stop being as logical when it comes to dating. And I actually just had a situation like this. I do like this Ask Me Anything on Fridays on my Instagram. And mm. someone had asked me how Steven, how my husband knew I was the one and when. And I asked him to answer for me. I was like, send me like a little blurb of, you know, how you knew I was the one and I will share it. And I'm actually going to pull it up because... He um, he was so logical in his first answer that I was like I I I'm I was like cringing from it. I was like, you need to try again, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, his his first answer was, I wouldn't say it hit me in a single moment. It was more of a series of moments together over a period of time. With each stage of our relationship, my affection for you grew to a place where I loved you an insane amount and I knew I'd found a partner with whom I could squeeze the most out of life. Maybe it was a weird combination of adoration and optimism. That was something I hadn't felt slash how I knew. I was like, listen, that is so sweet, but there is like no, that's so robotic. I was like, there's no like emotion in there. Try again. <laughs> Try again, honey. <laughs> and he did it again. And he said, and this is so much better, but I'm curious what you think. He said, I was just crazy about you. You were everything I wanted in a partner. There were ups and downs, but the highs were insane and always worth it. I wanted to experience that as long as I could. Like, how much better is that when Simple. he leaned into his emotions versus yeah. like typing out some sort of first we moved in together. Then I felt it was the next step. You know what I mean? Right. It had more feeling, had more soul. Totally. And I tell men, look, you don't need to worry about the information, the logic. There'll be plenty of facts and figures in what you say. Try to tap in more into that more soulful expression. Yes. And there's little sh little quick tips to do that. You can just start sentences. This, this, these are what my coaches taught me 10 plus years ago. Because um, I'm so analytical. I will go down the deepest analytical, logical rabbit hole with you if you want, but I know that's just not gonna help my dating life or my love life. Right. So just things like starting off sentences by saying, I feel. Well, here's how I feel about that. Uh, or playing, there's an improv game I love called Love Hate, where you have to really love things or really hate things. And it it's helped a lot of my clients just say, oh my God, I love that you're into Coldplay. I love that you went to Harvard. How'd that feel when you went to Harvard? What you your favorite movie is? I don't know. Um, uh, Casablanca. I hate that movie. <laughs> Whatever it mm -hmm. is, at least you, you're injecting some emotion. You're creating some energy that can create some kind of polarity, as opposed yeah. to two people talking about logical things, which is the opposite of romance, as Jordana said, which I really liked. Totally. Um, I can't let you go without talking about texting. I hear that. so the guy listening to this is like, what do I text? What's the what's the secret? What do women want from texting? Mm. Um, yeah, what do you got? Got any tips, any guidelines, do's and don'ts about how to text in that courtship dating phase of getting yeah. to know somebody? Well, I think that you need if you if you intend to continue seeing someone and ultimately date them, you need to be texting consistently. You need to text at least once a day. Um, mm. and you need to be as the man in the situation initiating most of those texts. And if like, you shouldn't be afraid to do that if you're getting a good response every time. Um, it's very much like just setting the pace for the relationship and you're courting this person. And so you should be sending those texts. Um, you should by this you know, whatever stage you're dating, you should have like good banter with one another, inside jokes. 
you should not ask for nudes. I think that's a given. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Don't send any unsolicited pictures. Um, but being, you know, switching up the conversation, sending like different things like a meme or a funny yeah. TikTok or you know, asking her about her day, following up when she says she has a big presentation the next day. How did the presentation go? You know, thoughtful texts that really show that that you care and make her smile and make her day, but not too much like, good morning, beautiful, good night, angel. You know, it doesn't need to be Mm. so like that as much as it's just like bringing that fun conversation into oh, her just day. when you just when you said that i got chills yeah. yeah did the hair on your hairy legs stand up when you oh when you yeah said that? It was it's, just, it's that just standing <laughs> hey hey angel oh i once had a client who by the way this is years ago he's now a proud dad with his Aww. new partner and i like to think that i helped that baby come into the world but Definitely. um after one date with a woman he sent me this long poem he was going to send her like a love poem no. about the two of them in a boat on a pond and no. like leaves. And, uh, and I was like, <gasps> do not send that message, no, sir. Never, <laughs> never. It's so funny I, because it's never a good idea to send like some long winded paragraph to anyone you're seeing ever. It's just never a good idea. Like you save that stuff for in person always. Right. And that's another texting tip. It's like, keep it fun, keep it light. Like if you have to call them out for something or if you want to have like a will you be my girlfriend conversation or I like you type of thing, like do it in person, always in person. Uh, Yeah, and when in doubt, do something in person if you Mm -hmm. can, if you can. Definitely. Uh, Okay, so I have a little game I want to play. So one of my favorite things to do in dating was have a couple fun games on a date and I've been doing this on the pod. So because you're obviously a woman and dating expert, I thought we'd play a little game called What Women Want and What Women Don't Want, since you can obviously speak for women, I think, pretty damn well. So I'm going to name a dating category. And if you would, just share with us, oh, here's what women want, here's what they don't want. Mm. Cool. Is that cool? Yeah, love it. Okay. Let's do it. Topic number one or category one is first date topics. What do women want to talk about? What do they not want to talk about? They want to talk about who you are and who you were and who you plan to be in the future. Ooh, that's great. And they great. don't want to talk about why your ex is a bitch <laughs> and yes. how much money your car costs. Why? I, know, I, I think I know the answer. And but... like drugs that you do. Oh, shoot. No wonder I had so much trouble back then. <laughs> Actually, back to an earlier topic, first date horror stories. A woman I was on a first date with, I asked her that question, what's your worst first date ever? She said, well, a guy once had his cocaine dealer who showed up on the date and gave him a delivery. I've heard that <laughs> story like happened to someone else. Maybe it's the same guy. <laughs> you must be out there. Okay. Um, I-, I loved your answer there because you said, tell her not just who you were and are, but also who you are becoming, who you're going to be. Can you elaborate on that? Because that was really interesting. Yeah, I think it's like the modern answer to like the where do you see yourself in five years? Like you should Mm. have a grip on that and be able to share that comfortably, like what your plans are in the next five years without somebody straight up asking, what is your plan in the next five years? Got it. Because ambition, a vision, a goal, that's attractive, right? So attractive. Right, as opposed to, well, I don't know. Who knows what will happen? Yeah, I don't know. I hate being a lawyer. (laughs) Okay, next category is, uh, let's say, when a man approaches a woman at a bar. What do women want? What do women not want? Women want something funny. Women always want to laugh. So leading with something that's going to make her laugh is so crucial Mm. and women don't want the hey beautiful hey sexy like it's just it's too it sounds like sleazy even if that's not your intention you know so open with something funny do you have any memories any 
examples, anecdotes from even even just a simple like how does it feel to be the most like the most beautiful person here? Like that's funnier than hey beautiful. Okay. Nice. Like cool. I or like I feel bad for all these other girls because you're here, you know. Yeah. Like, what should we do about it? One of the uh, funniest approaches I ever did. I was at a club in Vegas years ago, and I saw this woman who I ended up becoming and entering a relationship. And all these guys were hitting on her with the whole, hey, you're hot, you're gorgeous, you're what have you. And I, I'd i been taking improv classes, so I was learning the art of just being a silly character. Mm-hmm. And I unbuttoned my black button down, halfway down, and I just opened up my shirt. <laughs> and I walked over to her and I said, hello. I, and I, I adopted like a, a, a fake Latin lover accent. And I said, hello, I am Armando. <laughs> <laughs> and a skinny pale ginger like me saying that it was just <laughs> so dumb that she found it really funny that's amazing. and she she called me armando for the whole weekend it was yeah that's so, really funny yeah i think leading with humor and playfulness is is better than being all sexy always time, lean into the silly yeah good example one more um one more category uh a man's dating app profile from the woman's perspective mm. what do women want to see that might make them want to swipe right? And what do they not want to see? Mm. Women want to see like one tiny tidbit of vulnerability. If that's like mm. I'm in therapy or um, like kind of making something about your life into a funny prompt. Um, and women don't want to see gym selfies um selfies in general yeah and like pictures of you holding up fish <laughs> what, like, is what is it about that men just think that like if they show a picture of them having caught a fish then they're like i'm a man so you can trust that i'm a man now because i can catch a fish <laughs> and now you can swipe right. Right. Uh, the working title for my book was It's Not You, It's the Halibut You're Holding. <laughs> uh, and it ended up being a throwaway line in That's amazing. online dating chapter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess I, yeah, that's why men do it. Because they want to show, oh, I'm a provider. Look what right. I did. I can bring home, instead of the bacon, I can bring home the mackerel. Exactly. And then, by the way, going back to what you women do want to see again always humor always humor like if i'm cracking up from your dating app profile i'm saying yes no matter what you look like okay do you remember any lines or or just uh, themes that made you laugh in the past uh things there was a line once uh, recently it was very simple um i saw on a guy's dating profile that i was helping a girl with um, and it said, believe it or not, I, which is like a hinge prompt. Okay. It said, believe it or not, I took an Uber recently that was less than $50. <laughs> and I just, it was just like a funny little. Nice. And then there was another guy who recently had something. He said, all I ask is that you was the prompt. And he said, support Ben and Jen, like Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. Oh. <laughs> and I just thought yeah. it was silly. Like, I like when guys aren't afraid to lean into like a pop culture reference nice yeah i like pop culture references i remember i kind of fell a little bit in love once with a woman's profile on a dating app i'd never even met her i just love i we just matched and i it just i instantly wanted to meet her or at least go on a date with her and see what happened she she wrote uh something like i'm looking for um a man on the street but a dad bod in the sheets and I, I love that. think that's an allusion to a rap song, Jay Z. I don't know. I think mm-hmm. it was a. I think it's a rap song, but it was just a funny little rhyme, and it just, it just made my soul smile. So that's great. I love that. Um, all right, let's wrap up with. Usually, I ask a guest for what I what we call the three game changing dating tips. Mm-hmm. But let's make it four today, since your Instagram you give a lot of fours. I love able. that. I love um, that personalization. Yes. Let's make it very Lindsay personalized. Four game-changing dating tips for the 
the man who's listening to this, uh, anything you want, anything, fire away. Yes. Okay. Number one is follow the rules, meaning um, we met at Acme has a set of rules for men to follow and for women okay. to follow. Um, without getting too into them, I would say just like pay for the date if you ask her on the date, you know, um, be a gentleman, open doors, uh, you don't ask to go up or invite her over after the first date. Um, you know, all of those kinds of things. Follow those rules. Get her flowers. And I would say number two, always have the next date set up. Women hate when we're in this sort of limbo where we're like, when are we going to see them again? And like, are we just going to be, you know, pen pals now? Mm. Or are they going to ask me out on that other next date, right? Even if they're not free for a week, I still want to have that next date planned. Um, number three is initiate all of the things. All of the things. And don't be afraid to. Initiate the I love you. Initiate the let's move in together. And initiate the will you be my wife if that comes up. You know, initiate all the things. Don't make her feel like she has to corner you to have these conversations. Um and number four, which I didn't know we were going to have a number four, so give me a second. Um, number four, I would say um, don't be afraid to be persistent, which we talked mm, about a little bit. Right. But don't be afraid to be persistent because we're all going to get rejected in life. And it's like if you don't, ask you won't get and so you never know what's going on in a person's life be persistent if you really really especially for men i feel like men just are luckier in this instance where like they can get away with it so yeah get away with it be persistent and until you're creeping in on stalker territory just right. be persistent it's okay as long as she's responsive yeah. And or if she says, hey, thanks, but no thanks, I'm not interested, obviously move on. The guy who's listening to this, he's very afraid of being seen as creepy or coming across as some kind of uh, weirdo, which is a, it's coming from a beautiful place of not wanting to be a jerk. Right. But your message seems to be, hey, it's OK to be a man who's going after what he wants with persistence as long as there's empathy, as long as you're noticing how she feels. And then. Oh, yeah. To play it as it comes right and, and I have to tell you for the persistent guy um, when you stop being persistent she'll miss that yeah she will she, I'm, I know she will because my friend missed it and now they're married with two kids nice nice yeah I've had uh, years ago but I had a date from many moons ago who I asked her out a couple of times and, and she finally said, okay, yeah, I'm free on Friday, dot, dot, dot. I just wanted to see how persistent you are. Happy face, winky face. Oh, so, I love that. Yeah, persistence. I, say, I like to say persistence combined with empathy, with mm -hmm. noticing how she's feeling. And either way, you're, so, so you're never going to be a creep as long as you're noticing how you're making a woman feel and you adjust accordingly. Totally. Be persistent and self-aware. <laughs> Those, that's a really good place to end the advice portion of today. Uh, let's finish by you telling us a little bit about some live shows and events you have coming up in the end of September, in September and also November. Uh, yes. Tell us about We Met at Acme events, please. Thank you. So we do these live um, events, some of which are mixers in New York mm. City where you know men and women living in New York could meet each other, which are really fun. Yeah. Um, and we do these live shows as well. We have one in LA, SF, and Austin. So if you're in any of those places. And all of that can be found on our website, we met at acme.com. Fantastic. I tried to stump you, Lindsay. I couldn't do it. <laughs> you had an answer for everything. I'm going to retire the hairy leg pickup line that I started with. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I honestly dare someone to try it. I would just love to hear how that goes. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a blast. And uh, I hope to have you back sometime down the road and see you at one of your events. Would love to and would love that. Thank you so much. All right. Peace out. Later, guys. Thank you for listening to the Dating Transformation Podcast. For lots of free tips, videos, and other goodies, go to datingtransformation.com. 
See you next time. Produced by Heartcast Media.